Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from Oklahoma City, the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, a collaboration with the uh, Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today comes from the realm of uh, GI pathology, but with a nice little overlap with another area of interest in soft tissue. Um, the patient is a fairly young patient, 33 years old. And uh, on uh, imaging and exam, he's been found to have a mass that appears to be localized to the small bowel um, and present primarily in the mesentery. So uh, what do we know that may occur in this area? Well, there are a variety of things to be thinking about. Uh, but the surgeon didn't recognize this, and the radiologist had been a little bit uncertain about it. And so uh, first off was a frozen section uh, at the time of exploratory laparotomy. Uh, here we can see a rather pale uh, tumor, a little bit of blue, and a few little clusters of inflammatory cells. Um, as we look at uh, this uh, lesion, uh, we see here a nondescript sort of vascularity no significant atypia, this uh, inflammatory uh, process, um, and very low-grade appearing uh, uh, stroma, maybe a few admixed inflammatory cells, some eosinophils in here, uh, here and there, uh, with these uh, slight uh, cuffs of plasma cells and lymphocytes around a few of the vessels. Uh, so, uh, Frozen section diagnosis uh, was uh, rendered as a low-grade uh, fibromyxoid lesion. Uh, unclear if this is a true uh, tumor. Um, and then uh, the, page, the uh, resection uh, was not extended uh, to anything further. Now the next day we get uh, back our uh, permanent sections and we see this pattern uh, nicely demonstrated. Um, and this uh, slide uh, I think illustrates how the uh, tumor has sort of contracted or pulled uh, the uh, loop of bowel into a somewhat contorted uh, sense. And we can see that the inflammatory process here is transmural um, involving uh, the submucosa, uh, then the uh, adventitia and uh, mesenteric process here. Uh, a little bit higher magnification, we again see these clusters of lymphocytes um, and mixed inflammation. Uh, variable size vessels in the lesion. Um, and as we come into higher magnification, uh, I think we can see that there is a, a mixture of inflammatory cells here. We can see a fair number of eosinophils. Um, and uh, along with that, some lymphocytes uh, here in this area. Move over. And I think we can see here there's also some plasma cells uh, along with this uh, intermixed into this process. Uh, and then uh, associated with this, of course, is this very collagenous or pink matrix uh, in the background uh, with uh, some fibroblastic uh, component, uh, not particularly atypical, uh, but some fibroblastics or myofibroblastic cells here in this uh, interstitium. So, um, a couple of key features that uh, clue us off here, of course, is the location, uh, that this is uh, primarily in the mesentery. Uh, looking at the pattern of growth here into the surrounding fat, uh, we can see uh, that it sort of encompasses the uh, nodules of fat um, and it spreads into them. Uh, there's no uh, strong evidence of fat necrosis other than a few uh, slightly uh, uh, dystrophic uh, fatty cells here uh, as well. Uh, we've got another section we can look at here uh, showing uh, similar sorts of findings, a little bit more uh, into the uh, uh, infiltration of the fat um, and uh, not any uh, particular evidence of uh, uh, fat necrosis per se in the sense of uh, uh, loss of uh, function here. Uh, we do see here some clusters of uh, smooth muscle tissue, maybe around small venules uh, with uh, some compression of the uh, uh, lumen here. Um, 
So uh, what do we think of in terms of uh, differential diagnosis? Well, we would start thinking, of course, about things that we know could uh, cause this. Um, there are both benign and neoplastic lesions that can account for mesenteric lesions. Uh, on the benign side, certainly fat necrosis or abscesses can present in this location. We don't see features to suggest that. Um, a duplication cysts or other anomalies uh, can cause mesenteric masses, ectopic spleen, obviously not here. Sclerosing mesenteritis is a possibility along with uh, tuberculosis or other infectious etiologies. On the neoplastic side of things, uh, most frequently, certainly, we would see uh, metastatic neuroendocrine tumors uh, presenting as mesenteric masses in some situations. GI stromal tumors, uh, although those usually involve the uh, wall proper, uh, but may extend into the mesentery. Uh, desmoid or fibromatosis is a very um, significant lesion that can involve the uh, mesentery. And uh, I think we presented a similar case in, from the GYN tract not too long ago. Uh, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor is another lesion that can involve the adventitial area. And then the less common lesions like neural tumors, uh, lymphoma, liposarcoma are spread from carcinomas. We, we don't seem to have any features that suggest uh, any of those possibilities. But uh, looking at the, the possibilities here from the list, I think we're thinking sclerosing mesenteritis, possibly desmoid tumor, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor uh, would be the main things on our differential considerations. So uh, some immunohistochemical stains may be useful. Uh, here is an example of an ALK uh, stain. Uh, which uh, in this situation is uh, nicely negative. We don't see any uh, staining other than this uh, pale background staining uh, in any of the stromal cells or other uh, tumor cells. And of course, uh, the control internal controls and uh, the uh, secondary controls on the slide were appropriate. Uh, we also uh, looked at uh, beta catenin. Um, and here we have a little higher background uh, appearance, but as we uh, are looking in beta catenin, uh, we want to find uh, nuclear positivity in the, the uh, myofibroblastic or stromal type cells. And we really don't see any of that here. There are a few scattered positive cells with maybe nonspecific uh, um, uh, uh, oxidases, peroxides, or so forth that uh, would stain the uh, reagent, uh, but no uh, true immunomarking of the nuclei. So uh, beta catenin is negative. Uh, we can also compare these slides uh, to known examples. Um, so here's an example, a reference example uh, from our files uh, of a uh, fibromatosis. And we see this is a much more collagenous lesion uh, that seems to involve the outer portions of the uh, bowel wall. Um, and we don't see much in the way of inflammation. We certainly don't have a myxoid change. We don't have that myofibroblastic look. It's very collagenous and very low grade spindle appearing type of lesion. So uh, maybe not entirely typical of every case of fibromatosis because they can be variable in cellularity, but they do have a very collagenized uh, appearance. Um, also, uh, a reference example of uh, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. I'll uh, just give you a, a quick look at this. Here, we don't see any of that lymphocytic uh, clustering. Uh, we don't see the mixture of inflammatory cells, but we do see these uh, fairly low-grade, loose spindle-shaped cells, sort of almost in a tissue culture-like culture fashion. Um, not much atypia, but some mild variability and then some extravasated red cells uh, and maybe a few inflammatory cells along with this. And as we indicated, many of these cases would be ALK positive uh, as a useful positive marker, a negative marker, less useful um, uh, in the sense that the negative predictive value is not as high because the uh, sensitivity of ALK for this lesion is uh, only about 60 or 70%. So uh, we devolved upon the final diagnosis of sclerosing mesenteritis. Um, in understanding this disease, it's not a common disorder, but it's usually uh, found incidentally and typically has a fairly stable disease pattern. It's not a progressive, uh, fatal kind of disease in most cases, although there have been 
um, fatalities associated with this. A very nonspecific presentation, mass effect, pain, uh, and oftentimes these patients will have elevated inflammatory markers, whether that's a C-reactive protein or immunoglobulins or decreased albumin or other sorts of things. And radiographically, they have this uh, catchphrase of the so-called misty mesentery. Um, uh, they may also find fat necrosis or ele ele elements of fibrosis and some sort of a mass effect. These are usually single, but maybe occasionally will be multiple. Um, and histologically, we can see fat necrosis, uh, varying degrees of fibrosis, and of course, this mixed inflammatory pattern. Now, I pointed out the uh, plasma cells in our case. Uh, this has prompted some observers to consider IgG4-related diseases. Um, and in some patients, this has been demonstrated uh, as a finding uh, in these uh, cases of uh, misty mesentery sclerosing mesenteritis. Uh, but not all cases. Uh, those studies on our patient are still pending, um, and uh, we may do an addendum to this uh, later on if uh, need be. So our uh, final, uh, oh, before I, I leave that, uh, because this has a typically uh, uh, indolent presentation and radiographic presentation, uh, the management uh, typically does not bring it to surgery. Um, and so, uh, uh, this is a nice uh, view of the algorithm uh, that is uh, used by uh, or advocated in uh, the recent radiological uh, journal, American College of Gastroenterology, um, that uh, the uh, CT scan is reviewed. Uh, if you've got three, uh, lymph uh, three of the major criteria exhibited um, and you've got uh, essentially uh, small lymph nodes and asymptomatic findings, they may just go to observation. Um, and on the other hand, if they're symptomatic, then there may be uh, empiric treatment with uh, various uh, combinations of uh, immunosuppressives or prednisone um, with surgical intervention only in patients with persistent or recurrent disease. Uh, so I think that's uh, one of the important things to recognize is that this is not going to be a common uh, disorder coming across the surgical pathology bench. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Our final sign-out diagnosis today is sclerosing mesenteritis, uh, and I was able to talk at least one colleague into agreeing with me if, on that diagnosis. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this case, uh, and if you have uh, encountered similar cases, that you'll uh, share your experience in the comments, uh, or uh, please hit that subscribe button so you'll catch future releases from our uh, channel as well. Um, we hope you enjoyed this and uh, certainly uh, welcome you to come back and reach out to us directly if need be. Um, but until next time, thanks so much for being with us.